Hello everyone, and welcome to Slice Print Roleplay. Or maybe I should say welcome back. I know it's been uh, like, I think two weeks or more since I uploaded my last video. Um, I do apologize, but uh, my wife and I recently welcomed our newest little goblin into the house. Uh, he's happy and healthy, everything's going great, but I wanted to make sure that when I got back to recording, it was after we kind of got used to things and everybody got used to the new pattern and the new way things were gonna work before I tried to jump into recording on top of that. So. I appreciate your guys' patience, but um, yeah, let's get to it. All right, so in my last video, I talked about how to cut the head off that red dragon and then scale it up so you could print it as one large piece on your Ender 3 or similar medium-sized printer. But what if we wanted to make it bigger than that? What if we wanted to make this a massive dragon head that sits in your wall and demands people's attention and shows your nerd dominance over everyone you invite in your home? Well, if you were to do that, you would absolutely have to cut the model down, because as you saw in our last video, we made it as big as our build plate could hold, so we're going to have to cut the model into smaller pieces. And anytime you cut a model, you want to create what are called voids and pins, sometimes they're also called alignment pins, and sometimes it can also be called keying your model. So anytime you hear those three terms, you know it's the same thing. Basically what they're saying is, anywhere you cut that model, you're putting pins on one side of it, and making voids on the other side for those pins to fit into. And this is important because when you go to put that model back together and glue it up, you want it to be as easy and as precise as possible. And these pins make that happen so that you're not working with two flat edges. And anytime anyone's ever done that, when you try to glue two halves of a model together that have two flat edges and you're trying to keep everything perfect, we all know that that glue is going to seem like it's perfect and then it's going to shift at the last second and then the glue is going to set and it's going to be set in there with that small shift and forever every time you look at it, it's going to make you sad. And I don't want you guys to be sad. so. Stick with me and I'll teach you guys how to do this. So this is a fairly easy process, but it takes a little bit of getting used to. So follow along with me. Of course, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below or jump on the Facebook page. But um, basically what we're gonna be doing here today is we're gonna be cutting a smaller model up and then I'm gonna be doing a different video where I'm cutting that large dragon head. And the reason that I'm doing that is because the smaller model is gonna go a little bit quicker and I want this to be a little bit of a shorter video just so that I can get it done and get something up for you guys because I know you've been asking about how to do this and I really appreciate your patience, like I said, but I wanna make sure I get this done. So today we're gonna be cutting up a smaller model because typically when you're gonna do this process, it's gonna be on a smaller model. The larger dragon head is a lot of fun, but it's kind of a, a one-time project or maybe a, you know, a rare project that you're gonna do occasionally. It's not gonna be something you're gonna be doing as often as cutting arms or cutting a tail off a model. So we're gonna jump into it with a smaller model and I will be doing the dragon head later on. First thing we're gonna need, obviously, is a model. I have chosen this uh, troll model from Yasashi. You guys will remember that name from the video that I did about scaling miniatures. I use their bullet model and they do great stuff, awesome work. Definitely if you guys like this model or the other one that I, I mentioned before, then check out their Patreon, jump on that. They have lots of really great stuff. One other quick side note that I wanted to make, if I haven't mentioned it before now and if I forget to do so again, I apologize, but typically the pattern that I kind of want you guys to follow with this stuff, if you want to, I think the best way to learn is to open Mesh Mixer up with me and, and download this model. You'll find the links in the description below, of course. Um, download this model and work on it with me so we can do this together and you can learn this, this stuff with me at the same time, at the you know in real time, because that's the best way to learn is, is by doing. So if you guys haven't already, if that's not your learning style, then absolutely by all means do what works for you. But I think that the best way to learn is to, you know, get into it and learn by doing so work with me as i'm doing it you know pause the video when you need to but definitely jump on this model and uh, get it downloaded and we'll move to the next part okay so with the model downloaded and we bring it into mesh mixer you'll find that it is not in the right orientation or at least it's not in the orientation i would like it to be in for cutting and working on it i like it to be in the same orientation it's going to be standing on my table it just makes it easier for me so i'm going to hit align or i'm sorry i'm going to hit edit and then go to transform and then we're going to use the snap points on the outside here we're going to bring it down to 90 degrees hit accept, and then we're gonna to go to a line. Now, just a quick note here, you guys are gonna see my computer's hesitating a little bit because this is a really high detailed model. Um, so we're gonna to go to a line and you'll see that it jumps up here. So as before, its feet were down below the model or down below the build plate, now they're up above. So you always wanna make sure you use that align feature. It's really helpful and saves you some frustration in the future. Then from there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the select tool. Now, you guys will remember this from my other video, you wanna bring it down to something like five, six, somewhere in there. It makes it easier to select small details. And then uh, we're gonna create that same kind of lasso effect. And just another quick reminder, you always wanna make sure that there's nothing behind your target. There's no spots of the model behind your target that you're gonna select. So in this orientation, you can see that there's um, a lot of his torso is gonna be behind. If we were gonna try to cut it right here at this, uh, the wrist right above those rocky outcropping there, um, you'd see that we'd um, actually be selecting a lot of his 
torso that's sitting behind it too. So you want to make sure you get into an orientation where you're only selecting what you want and there's nothing, there's no part of the model that's going to be behind your target. So like I said, we're going to try to select just this wrist above these rocky outcropping here. So we're going to go like this and there we go. Okay. So now we have that selection there. Now I'm just doing this because it's easier for me. If I really wanted to, I would probably cut this somewhere down around here. Maybe um, I think that would give you the best detail, the best spot to cut it and uh, would allow for um, a large portion of this model to be printed separately. And then you could use less supports on these arms here. So I think that would be where I would cut it would be down here. But for this one, it's just an example. So from there with that area highlighted, we're going to go to edit, then we're going to go to plane cut. And now you can see it automatically um, sets itself to that spot that we selected, but it's not in the right orientation. So we're gonna have to move it around a little bit. Probably about there, 35 sure. And we're gonna spin it um, this way. Okay. That looks pretty good there, just to make sure. Oop, nope, that's not what I wanna do. Control Z, go back. Move in a little bit. Okay, yeah, so that looks pretty good. So I'm looking for a spot that's gonna make a clean cut. Go to the back side here, we can see right about there. I like that. Oh, a little too far. So like I said in my other video, sometimes if you get too close to the area that you selected, Mesh Mixer doesn't really know how to fill in that gap. So you definitely don't want to cut too close to your area or else it'll leave hollows here and it'll be all jagged and it'll, it'll have a really hard time filling in those edges and then you'll have to do more work later. So just move up a little bit until you see there's that flat edge there and then you know you're getting a perfect flat edge on your model and you're gonna have flat edges on both sides. So that's definitely what you want. So just play with it a little bit, make sure you're not getting too close to the area you selected. So then we're gonna to go to slice, keep both, remesh full, and you're gonna hit accept. All right, so we made our cut and it's in two pieces now, right? Not quite yet. So you can see if I go to move this model, it's still moving as one piece. So there's one more step that we have to do here, and that's what's called separate shells. So the separate shells function, uh, there's an important note about it, and that is what it's gonna do is it's gonna look through this model and find different edges, and it's going to pull those edges apart and make them into separate models. Now, in this case, it's gonna be really easy because this model was merged so that it's only one piece to begin with. However, depending on the artist, depending on how they uploaded the model, there are times where it will find multiple different shells that you didn't make and didn't cut. So for example, we're gonna hit this and it's going to pull this model into two pieces for us because like I said, this model was merged, but there are definitely times where you'll hit separate shells and you might find that each fingernail is an individual shell, each eye is an individual shell. Like I said, it depends on how the artist uploads it. If you run into that a lot and it's giving you guys a lot of trouble, let me know and I'll do a video on how to deal with that. But for now, we're just gonna continue on with what we're seeing here on the screen. So after the separate shell function completes, we will have two models now. We have the main part, main part here, and then we have our hand that we cut, and we now have a lighter gray color for the one that we have highlighted. So with the hand highlighted, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to the object browser over here, which should have popped up when you completed that function. If it didn't, or if you accidentally clicked off of it, just go into view, show object browser, and it'll pop right back up again. So with the hand highlighted, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit this eye symbol, and it'll turn translucent. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click on either inside this object browser or you can click on the screen. We're gonna click on the main model and that's gonna make the hand disappear so that we can work on aligning these pins or adding these pins rather. And don't worry about it, the hand will come right back again when we need it, but for now it's just out of our way so we can work on this part of the model. All right, so adding pins is really easy. We're just gonna to go to Mesh Mixer, which is this funky looking ball with a face on it. And we're gonna go down to a square. I recommend using a square because I think that using a circle is or a cylinder rather, is kind of asinine. Um, you're putting in a pin that will allow both models to spin independently of each other, which is kind of defeating the purpose of creating a you know a system that's gonna allow you to align, align the model perfectly. So use a square, just click and drag, bring it over, and drop it about in the center, as close as you can get. And sometimes it does come in way bigger than you need it to be, and it's fine. You're just gonna click on this little arrow here, and you're gonna drag towards the right side of the screen, and it'll bring it down. Don't worry about getting it too close right now. It's not super important. We're gonna be able to adjust the size of it later and it's positioning too, but you just wanna get it as close as you can to make it easier on you later. But one important uh, setting to make sure you have correct is you wanna make sure that it's not set to append mesh. That is the default setting. You wanna make sure you go down to create new object. You want this to be its own object and we'll get into that in a little bit here. So you're gonna hit accept. 
and now you'll see that we have three objects over here in the browser because we've now added a new bra uh, new object to the scene. So with this object selected, with the little square selected, we're going to go to Edit, go to Transform, and it does look like it's pretty close to the center, so I'm not going to worry about it. You do want to make sure you have equal distance between the edges of the model so you're not creating any stress or any weak points in the model and uh, ruining its integrity. But one thing we do want to change is we're going to make it 3, 4, and 3. And what that's going to do is it's going to make this square 3 by 3 by 4 long. And I think that's a pretty good size for this model. It, you'll kind of have to play with it depending on the model, but that's a general idea you want to go with. You want to make sure the top number and the bottom number are the same. You can make the middle number the same if, if you want. I usually recommend making it a multiple of two just because then you'll know that you'll have a, an equal amount on both sides. Um, it doesn't really matter, but it just it makes me happy. So, you know, stick with it if you want to make me happy. So hit accept. Now we have a pin on our model, but it's not actually part of the model. It's just set in there. So what we have to do next is you can do this in two ways. You can, if you want to use the, um, the actual scene here, you can have this selected and hold shift and then select the model and it'll bring up this window over here. Or you can, with this selected, go over to your object browser and hold control and select the right object that you want. So it doesn't matter how you do it, but if you're going to do it in the screen here, use shift. If you're going to do it in the object browser, use control. Then it'll bring up this window here. We're going to go to Boolean Union. Don't ask me what that means. I just know that that's what we're going to. I think Boolean is a type of stock or soup or something. I don't know. You guys can tell me in the comments. Now, these settings are super important to get right. So I'm going to set this and then make sure that you take a screenshot or something or just remember it for the future because these settings will absolutely impact tremendously how precise the pin that you're making here is. And this will matter for this one and the void that we're going to make on the other side. So make sure you copy down these settings um, after I set them. This is the default settings. So don't use these. Um, wait a second here and use the ones that I'm about to show you. Stop being so impatient, I guess is what I'm saying. Jeez. All right, so those are the settings that you want to copy down. Make sure that you use those every time for this function. Mesh Mixer is a really powerful program, but sometimes that can actually be to its detriment um, because it tries to help out by merging edges and stuff, and things can get kind of warped, and the clean edges that you want for a pin like this aren't going to be preserved if you don't have these kinds of settings. So make sure you're using these when you uh, create pins like this. Now we're going to hit Accept, and it's probably going to take my computer a while, so I'll see you guys in a minute. All right, there you go. So now we have a pin created in this model. It is, you can see over here in the object browser, now we only have two models again because this pin is now part of this model. And you can see how clean those edges are because we made sure we checked all those settings. Make sure again, like I said, make sure you use those settings because like I said, I've had issues with that in the past. So those are the settings you want to use to keep this clean and precise. Now what you want to do is you want to make sure with this, uh, the main part of your model here selected, we're going to go to File, we're going to go to Export, and we're just going to call it Troll Body, and I'm going to save it to my desktop to make it easy to find. All right, so once that's done, you want to absolutely double check and make sure that that is saved. So you see we have Troll Body there, and want to make sure that that's saved because we're now going to go and undo everything we just did, and there's a good reason for it. Bear with me. So what we're going to do here is we're going to hit control Z and go back to the point where this square is its own model again. So we're going to go back to the point that we have three separate models here. All right. So there you go. We're back to having three models again. So now we have the square in the center, we have the troll model, and then we have the arm that we have hidden away in, you know, nothingness right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the troll body, the main model. We're going to delete it. And then we're going to go back over to the object browser and we're going to bring that hand back in. And you'll notice that the pin is in the exact same position it was on the other model, but now it's in the receding side on the other side of the model, which is perfect. So this is the way the mesh mixer works. And this is the beauty of mesh mixer is that things stay right where they were. So we made that cut, we put that pin in and that pin's going to be in the exact same spot right where it needs to be to be perfectly aligned with the other side of that model. So there's three important things you guys have to do from here. First of all, make sure that you're keeping track of which side of your model is going to be the pin and which side of your model is going to be the hollow or that void. So I've already exported the part of the model that's going to be the pin. So that's taken care of. So now I know that this part of the model is going to be my hollow. I'm going to select this square part in the middle, the pin that we made. Now I'm going to go to edit. I'm going to go to transform. And the reason that we're doing this is because we don't want our hollow to be the same size as our pin because it's going to be, 
it's going to be kind of rough. You're going to have to sand or cut things down and it's just, it's going to be uncomfortable for everyone. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this and go to 3.3 and then we're going to go 4.3 and 3.3 on the bottom. So you're just going to add an extra 0.3 on this one to make it a little bit bigger because I know right now it's a solid object, but we're going to be able to, in a minute here, we're going to create a void out of this. So we want to make sure that this is a little oversized to make sure it slides down simply on that pin and we're not going to have any trouble. Um, 0.3 is the closest that I'm comfortably able to get consistently with my printers. So that's what I do. Resin printers is not going to be any issue, but FDM, that's pretty much basically what you want to do. You can go a little bit bigger. 0.5 would probably be all the bigger I'd go with that, but 0.3 seems to work pretty well on my stuff. So play around with it if you have to, but um, give that a shot at 0.3 and see what it does for you. So we're going to hit accept. Now from here, it's very important how you select this model, because if we select this pin and then we select the hand, it's going to subtract the hand from the pin. That's not what we want. So what you select first is going to be the primary, and then what you select second is going to be subtracted from it. Hopefully that makes sense. So we're going to select the hand, and then holding shift, go down and select the pin. Or we, like I said, we can do it the other way. You can select the hand, hold control, and select it from the um, object browser. Either way, you're gonna do the hand and, uh, there we go, hand and then the pin. And then you're gonna go to, this time it's gonna be a Boolean difference, not a Boolean union, it's gonna be a Boolean difference. I'm probably not saying that right, but we're gonna go to Boolean difference. And there you go, created a perfect pin. Same thing this time. You want to make sure it's precise. Search depth is zero. Auto reduce result is off. This one's going to be up around 18. 18, I said. There we go. And then this is going to be down to zero. This is going to be down to zero. And there you go. You now have a perfect void that's going to fit the pin that you made. So hit accept. Then we're going to hit. Um, like I always say to do, you're gonna hit a line because this is up in the air. So we're gonna hit that, and then we're gonna go to File, Export. We're gonna go to Troll Hand. Sorry, we're gonna name it Troll Hand. Troll Hand, sounds like a cool band name. All right, so now if we open something like Cura up, or any slicer, this obviously works for resin too, and we're gonna bring both of these in. Oh, nope, Troll Body, Troll Hand, open. Now we have this model on the side here that's got this pin on one side, or a pin on his hand. And then if we flip this around, you should be able to see that this has a void on the other side. So there you go. We have our void and we have our pin. Now these will fit together perfectly if, as long as you made sure that you made the hollow 0.3 bigger than you made the pin so that it all slides together. And um, yeah, that's the process, guys. All right, guys, hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more. Helps me out a ton. And if you have any questions, jump onto that Facebook page. I love seeing new people on there. And definitely, if you're going to use this uh, technique to create your own models or if you're going to kit bash something or, or just cut down a model to make it easier to print after you size it up, definitely jump on there and post what you're working on because I, I love seeing that stuff. All right, well, let's go print something.